So the things you might do is inspect, you might lubricate, you might replace parts as you find that they don't meet the criteria they need to meet, and they therefore need to be replaced, and so on, okay? Then finally, what you need to do over here is you need to establish the intervals or frequencies at which you're going to perform these checks on these, at these modules. So for example, uh, on their checklist for the 830 slash 910 press, they have frequencies of weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly, okay? And so where they have, they might have squares, like this, and one of them is blacked out, you're going to perform that task perhaps monthly, okay? And where if, if another one is blacked out here, you may perform that given task quarterly. So then you would have to schedule uh, when you perform these, uh, these uh, tasks, okay? Once you've, once you've looked at a task, I'm, I'm looking at my unwind station, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to inspect the bladder for leaks. Then, and I'm going to do it every month. Well, if you're going to do it every month, then you have to set up a schedule, a calendar, or some method that will remind you or alert you to it's time to perform that particular function. Okay? And there's different ways that that can happen depending on, on the way you work. All right? So another way that they uh, do it, though, is by the hours of operation, all right? So on their checklist for the 2200 press, the frequency is expressed in hours. So they have 40, they have 120, they have 360, and they have 1440 hours. Hours, okay? So perhaps there are things, the motor the brushes on motors, uh, parts that wear where, uh, during the hourly operation of the press that you might want to inspect instead of uh, at, at just intervals by quarter or by day or by year, by number of hours that part actually wore because the concept there is, well, if it's just sitting there, it's not wearing, okay? I tend to prefer to just do it by in, uh, intervals and time periods rather than hour periods. And maybe the hour period is just being a backup. In other words, I want to check this every week or every month or every quarter, provided that interval does not, the, these number of hours are not exceeded during that interval. And the, and the reason I do that is because, you know, to try to manage how many of these hours the press has been operating and I'll go by that way, it's a little bit more challenging. Now, that said, one way you might do that is that you might have on your calendar a weekly check to check the number of hours on your press and to compare that against your maintenance schedule. Now that would be an effective way of managing when you're doing it by hours. For example, let's say that you're, uh, this given task you're going to do every 120 hours, okay? If that's the case, you might have on your calendar um, every week, every Monday or every Friday, for example, to check the number of hours on the press. You come to your press, you check the number of hours, you subtract it from the previous, uh, subtract the previous number of hours for it, and you come up with the number of hours. And then you see, okay, hey, it exceeds 120 minutes. What tasks do I need to do at 120 minutes? You'll find that this task satisfies that, and this is a task that you'll then want to do. So that might be a way that you can manage uh, when you perform a function based on frequency of, or hours of operation. And you can combine the two. You can do it by daily, weekly, quarterly, yearly, whatever interval works. And as a backup, do it by hourly, by checking the, the number of hours so that you have a, a, at least a, a situation where uh, the number of hours of operation are not exceeding and not exceeded the recommended number of hours that they say to check that. Okay. So um, another way of doing it would be by date. And you can see right here that I have established intervals of frequency. It could be by number of hours, it could be by date, or it can be by periodic routine. Okay, so uh, that's that. Okay. 
And the, finally, I want to say just one thing about, and, and now I, that I've said all of that, and say, how might I start a sheet, okay? The way I might do it is I would take those sheets and I'd set them up in an Excel spreadsheet and I'd put the headers, okay? And I'd kind of follow this sheet using what applies, what I think applies to my machine and discarding what I think may not apply to my particular machine. Once I have that starting point, I'll then take that sheet and I'll go from start to finish through the press. Okay? Now, let's say this is your press, the MA830, and you have a central drum here with one, two, three colors, something like that. You have an unwind here. And you have a rewind here, something like that. You might have a die station and all those, those works up here, okay? Okay. Now, <laughs> you start at the unwind, and you start to say to yourself, at this point, what things do I want to check? The bearings of this, I want to lubricate that, and so on and so forth. And just work your way around that press to every point. Every point that you come to where there are significant components and you just follow that web path, whatever path it might take, right? You follow that web path, you identify those points, start to fill it out on this sheet. And over, over time, you'll come up with a pretty good sheet. Um, if you discover, hey, you know what, I don't have that thing on my checklist, but that's something I want to uh, add there, then you just make a note, go to your spreadsheet, edit your spreadsheet, print out another form, and there you go. And another thing I recommend when you're doing forms is do not print out a bunch of forms, especially as you're evolving this. You want to keep this in an electronic format, like a spreadsheet, and print it out when you're going to use it. That way, if you make a revision, you don't have 10, 50, 100 sheets that you've printed out previously that are now obsolete, that you really wish you didn't have printed. Print the forms out as you need them so that you will be, uh, you'll not be discouraged from readily uh, changing it and just printing out a new form with the new change and not having any in a, in a storage box or anything like that, okay? So I think, I hope that helped. Uh, and finally, what I want to say, say Lee, is um, uh, because we'll, we'll see each other at the Phoenix Challenge, the high school judging uh, competition. We can talk about it there. Maybe uh, we can set up a time. But please feel free to call me um, or, or email me, and uh, we can talk about if you're interested in me coming down and looking at your press and helping you with a, with a start of checklist and all of that and getting you on a routine. And then what I can do also is uh, make recommendations as to whether there are any electronic components or anything like that that you might want a technician to come in and focus on, okay? So let's get your press fixed up to the point to where a technician, if necessary, is uh, you know, a qualified Mark Andy technician, if necessary, is not spending time on the little things. They're spending their time on the bigger things, and we can knock out a lot of the little things, okay? Say hi to the, uh, your students. I look forward to seeing those that come to the competition. And uh, thanks for thanks all you guys for your time.